am i audible everyone am i audible yes ma'am yes ma'am okay okay yes ma'am uh so today we are going to discuss mainly uh, some of the important things uh, in depth mm -hmm. vlsi okay so yesterday we have discussed up to like uh, what happens if the transistor reduced beyond 1 nanometer right uh so did you did you uh, get any uh, idea on that after uh, after the session have you researched on that through some websites or some research papers have you gone through that so what would be the next uh, vlsi technology we can see in next 5 years once uh, we, uh, the chip has uh, moved to that the size of the nanometer the size of the transistor has reduced to 1 nanometer beyond 1 nanometer so what what are the major technologies we can see in the future you know meeting jaina ki sorry hello yeah tell your voice is not audible Yeah, can you talk now? Okay, so yesterday what we have discussed means like whenever the transistor is reducing to one nanometer, the distance between the source and the drain is very less. Okay, so due to that, uh, the transistor may not work as a switching operation. It doesn't. Uh, work as a switch operation switch in the sense uh, up to now we have stored the data in terms of uh, binary as a zero and one like that right so zero one in the sense of the tr uh, transistor either on or off that is the main operation of a diode or a transistor like so how the transistor works till now mute your system whoever uh, have the doubts those can unmute your system and you can talk okay uh, so uh, here uh, whenever the transistor reduces to 1 nanometer beyond the 1 nanometer we are not able to pass the current between the source and the drain because the channel is very less between two uh, so there there will be so many limitations like a short circuit effect the gate tunneling into the uh, the gate uh, electron will be tunneled into the gate okay so we are we have moved to the atomic level okay atomic level means what is mean by a atom atom in the sense uh, uh, it is a, a it is a molecule like uh, the electrons uh, the electrons will revolve around the atom and the protons and neutrons uh, uh, will be there within the atom right uh, if you go with atomic theory okay so if you are from intermediate background you you will know the physics right so atomic theory the quantum mechanics and the, the properties of electron okay in quantum mechanics uh, what what is mean by spin property or uh, 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 the electron property so you will get uh, these ideas so whenever we are moving beyond 1 nanometer by using these uh, technologies we are going to create the uh, chip design okay so by using the quantum mechanics or by using the uh, like a neuromorphic chips okay so in this session we are going to discuss mostly on what is the next future of vlsa what is the future of vlsa for next 5 years and 10 years okay so if you are, i think you may heard or not i don't know uh, the uh, the uh, the pm uh, uh, modi okay uh, they, uh, so he have the talk with some us uh, uh, investors on semiconductor industry uh, like uh, some of the companies are going to invest uh, in the uh, india in next 2 uh, to 3 years so india is going to become as a uh, one of the semiconductor hub right uh, so the investors uh, of from the most of the companies most of the semiconductor companies from the us and the foreign countries they are going to invest uh, uh, the billions of uh, uh, dollars in the uh, india right so how they are investing uh, how they are trusting the technology 
so how they can invest uh, those many uh, amount those much amount uh, in the uh, india because there is no market in us or uk or anywhere if you ca uh, compare any any foreign country okay compared to those uh, countries india have a good market okay uh, nowadays you can you can uh, search for any job whether it is a electronics vlsa or embedded system or software you just compare with the uh, some foreign com uh, companies like foreign countries like uh, us or uk and with india india is very better than uh, these countries okay because uh, the uh, India is getting some of the advantages, technologies, uh, like investors are coming to the uh, India. Okay, so because of that, uh, and next, whatever the technologies we are getting, so these will boom the market. Okay, VLSA market, the semiconductor industry. So in that, the future of VLSA. So uh, we are predicting that the future of VLSA may be around the quantum technology, okay, the quantum computings or otherwise uh, the artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence will be involved into the VLSA, okay, so these are the predictions in the semiconductor industry, okay, most of the companies are working on these projects also, All, already Google, Intel, uh, uh, these companies have worked on quantum mechanics, uh, the quantum computing, they designed the quantum computers also, and some neuromorphic chips, already uh, they are in... Uh, uh, implemented AI chips. Already you are seeing the chat GPT, right? That is one of the application of AI. So slowly it is improving. The technology is improving slowly. Okay. So uh, that, that would be uh, collaborate with VLSA uh, purely. Okay. In next uh, uh, coming years. Okay. So we'll see what are the technologies in depth. Okay. First one is the uh, quantum computing okay so after uh, whenever the transistor is going beyond one nanometer one of the technology is quantum computing so what is mean by quantum computing how the quantum computers are working and how much speed at what speed they will work and what is the difference between classical computer and quantum computer okay um yeah i'm doing uh, uh, i'm recording the session so if you observe Okay, uh, beyond the transistor, so yesterday some of you told like uh, after nanometer we can move to the picometer which is a very small compared to the nanometer. But in the nanometer only, we are not able to control the electrons. We are not able to control the electron which, which is going to tunneling into the gate. Okay, but if you go beyond the pico, Okay, even in a one nanometer by using the MSO2, uh, MOS2 material, okay, we are not able to control the electron. Okay, so we have already reached that stage, okay, which there is no controllability on electron. So by using the atomic theory here, okay, by using the some of the principles, some of the quantum principles, we are going to design a, a quantum uh, like a, a quantum chip okay so here we will see how we are going to store the data in it okay so first of all before that you need to understand what is the atomic theory okay so atomic theory is in quantum mechanics is a branch of physics which describes the behavior of atoms and the particles within the principles of quantum physics okay so if you observe here there is an atom so around the atom the electrons are revolving so what is the property of electron uh, it will revolve around the atom uh, by uh, by rotating its uh, own okay so self rotation and also it will rotate around the atom so neutrons and protons will be in the middle of the uh, atom right so this is the atomic theory so here we are going to predict the electron where the electron will be actually we cannot predict the electron because uh, the electron will be in a wave position right so here the electron if you observe it would be in a wave position in the wave we cannot uh, predict where the electron sometimes it will be in wave position whenever we are trying to predict it will be automatically 
uh, uh, goes into the particle position. Okay, electron have two properties, wave and particle. Whenever it think like someone is observing the electron, it will move to the particle stage. Okay, particle state. So it is very difficult to predict a electron, whether it is a wave position or particle position. Okay, but after doing so many, so much research, we are able to predict the electron. By using the electron, we are storing the data in it. Okay, in terms of uh, qubits. So how we are storing the data here? Mainly for electron, we have some principles. Okay, so certain principles like a spin property or entanglement property. Okay, so by using these properties, we are going to store the data. So if you observe here, wave part uh, pa part uh, particle duality. Okay, so uh -huh. some of the principles for the... Uh, mm -hmm. Hello. These are the some of the principles for the electron, like wave particle du uh, duality, quantization of energy, and uh, Heisenberg uh, uncertainty principle, electron spin property, quantum numbers. So we will discuss uh, one by one each. We are not going to discuss in depth of the subject, okay? Because these are like a specialization subjects, okay? If you are very interested in uh, VLSA specialization, you can prefer uh, any one of the future technology, okay? So today we will discuss some of the technologies, right? So based on your interest, you can prefer any one, okay? So first coming to the difference between the classical computer and quantum computing. So classical computer in the sense, whatever we are using nowadays, uh, like whatever we are using the laptops, the computers, all these are classical computers, okay? So it will have the state uh, uh, and it will perform the task according to the number of states, okay? And uh, the data will be stored either zero or one whether transistor is on or off. They, based on that, it will store the data, okay? But here uh, in quantum computers, if you observe, so what is happening here, there will be qubits. Qubits in the sense, either zero or one. Qubit, how the uh, quantum computing is going to store the data, the electron have the spin property, okay? So electron in the sense there would be an atom and it will uh, revolve around the atom, okay? By rotating its own its own spin property. Suppose you can uh, you can take a coin, okay? So whenever the coin is rotating, how it will rotate a coin? The coin will rotate uh, uh, in a spin in spin manner. So we cannot tell whether it is a head or a tail until unless it stop the uh, it stop rotating, right? So whenever it is, uh, yeah, yeah, whenever it is in a static stage, okay, whenever it stop rotating, we can predict whether it is a uh, head or a tail, okay? Until unless it would be in a rotating state only. Like that electron also, always it would be in rotating state, okay? So if you observe, uh, like a uh, arrow mark is up. Arrow mark is up means, the spin is high, spin up. So whenever the spin is up, we are able to store as a zero bit by applying some of the magnetic field uh, around the uh, spin property of electron. By applying the magnetic field, we can store the zero bit there and down either one bit. Sometimes we will store either uh, zero or one, both at a time. So it have three type of qubits. Uh, either 0 or 1 and 0, 1. Okay. So, because of that property, the quantum computer will work the, uh, uh, the many times faster than the classical computer. Okay. So, if um, so this is one of the superposition principle. Okay. Superposition principle in the sense the same spin by using the spin property, we are going to store the qubit, okay? So if you observe the first, uh, first uh, picture, so the spin is middle. Middle in the sense, uh, there is a chance of storing either one or zero, 50-50%, 50-50%, right? So if you observe second, uh, the most uh, chance would be at zero, okay? 
So for zero, 85% and for one, 15%. So it will store the data at zero. Okay, uh, qubit zero. Like the third, third in the sense, uh, the most chance at one. Okay, 85% chance is uh, at one side. So it would store one bit data. Okay, like that by using the spin property of electron, we are storing the data in this quantum computing by using the quantum mechanics uh, properties. Okay, this is very basic thing we are discussing. But if you go for internal subject, there are a lot of mathematical operations will be there. Uh, everything uh, de uh, deals with the mathematical uh, algorithms only. Okay, so basically what is the main uh, intention of the uh, quantum computing we are discussing here. Okay, just I am giving the idea on the future technology. Okay, so like this, we are going to store some data. So how we you can compare with the classical computer? Classical computer means there is a flow of electrons. In the flow of electrons, we are storing the data in the transistor, either on or off. But in this quantum computer, we are predicting either one electron or some electrons by using those electrons by applying the spin property by applying some magnetic field with the spin we are going to store either zero or one or zero one okay did you all got the clarity everyone got the clarity up to here Ma'am, uh, is this uh, quantum uh, computers related to transistors only? No, here we are not using any transistor. We are we will use the electron atom in atomic level. We use the atom. So always we will uh, how we, we are storing the data in atom means first of all we need to stabilize the atom here. So what is atom? Atom in the sense always it will rotate in a circuit. Suppose uh, if you take any current wire. So in current wire, the electrons are passing. Electrons are passing in the sense current is flowing, right? So in the current flow, there will be lot of electrons will be there. In that uh, uh, electron will be rotate always around the atom, right? So we are predicting that atom and we are going to store the data in the atom. Okay. So... Uh, here we are not using any transistor. Ma'am, uh, how quantum computers are faster than classic computers? See, how the quantum computers are faster means here, these are working with the qubits. Qubits in a sense, see here, if you observe, uh, the number of qubits and number of states. So if number of qubits or one means it will work at a time with the two states. If number of qubits is two means it will work at a time four with four number of states. Uh, three bits means eight number of states. Parallelly, the number of states are increasing whenever the number of bits are increased. Okay. But for classical computer, it is not like that. Okay. Whatever the number of states are there, it will perform those many number of operations. So that is the difference. So parallelly, suppose, uh, 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 suppose uh, uh, you are uh, tossing some of the 10 number of coins or there, okay? Or uh, you are uh, playing some cards, okay? Some card. So there are 100 number of cards or there, okay? In 100 number of cards, if you want to pick a joker or a queen, so how the quant uh, classical computer will pick a uh, uh, like a queen or a joker. So in 100 number of cards, first it will check with first card. If first card is not either queen or joker, it will go to the second card. If second card also not a queen or joker, then third. If not third, then fourth. Like that it will uh, check for every single card, right? If it find any joker or a queen or something, whatever uh, required, uh, so it will pick that and it will put aside like that we increase the counting value, right? Uh, so for hundred, it, uh, to search hundreds of card, suppose there are hundred number of card, to search hundred number of card, cards, it will take some 
100 time unit, like 100 seconds, okay? Same 100 number of parts, if you want to check with the quantum computing, parallelly it will check all the chords okay and parallelly it will pick if any uh, if it it would find any, uh, find any joker or queen it will uh, pick parallelly all the chords so what what is the time uh, time delay here in uh, how much time it would do that thing only 1 second right so this is the comparison between 100 seconds and 1 second okay did you understand? Yes, so that is how the fast the computer the quantum computing will work faster than the classical computing. Okay, so here we are going to store the bits uh, in terms of spin, spin or entanglement. Entanglement principle in the sense suppose suppose uh, there are uh, two electrons. Okay, suppose electron one and electron two. Okay, we will apply the uh, entanglement principle between these two electrons electron in the sense whatever uh, if you if it is passing around the it is just like a molecule right so wherever uh, uh, there are two molecule if you are applying some property uh, entanglement property between two if one is spin high another one would be automatically spin down okay so if one is storing the data as a zero next electron will store data as a one okay so that is the entanglement principle there are a lot of principles out there okay in quantum mechanics by using these principles we are going to store the data okay so did you all got clarity yes ma'am okay so if you observe some of the quantum algorithms here, okay, suppose first one is the multiplication, multiplication of 7177 into 3001. So that is the uh, answer what we got. Okay, multiplication means we can perform very easily. But if you want to do some complex algorithms, uh, some complex things like a factor a factorization, or if you want to find any value like uh, any Fibonacci series, or if you find if you want to work with the, the complex algorithms, okay, uh, by using the classical algorithm, it is very hard. That means very hard in the sense we will calculate, but it would take some time. Okay, it would take some uh, time like a uh, two minutes or one minute. It would take some time. But by using the quantum algorithms, suppose if you see here, Shaw's algorithm. By using Shaw's algorithm, uh, we can we can calculate any type of uh, uh, calculations very easily in efficient manner. Okay, in very less time, we can calculate the uh, values here. Okay, so that is what the difference between classical computing and the quantum computing. So next, uh, if this quantum computing is successful, mostly it won't success because it has several disadvantages. Uh, disadvantages in, uh, in the sense several limitations out there for quantum computing. Mostly, uh, maybe we can't predict that. Uh, we will discuss those limitations also, then you will get the idea. Okay, so everyone understood the difference how uh, the in the quantum uh, algorithms are working. Mainly quantum computing, quantum algorithms will be used in encryption and decryption like a hacker, hacking, uh, uh, in uh, hacking also we use cyber security. Uh, the, uh, there we use these quantum algorithms mostly, okay, for encryption and decryption purpose because they involve a lot of uh, uh, mathematical calculations, a lot of calculations will be involved if you want to, uh, uh, if you want to, encrypt some data like that right so by using this quantum algorithm we can uh, uh, deal very easily we can get uh, all the data in uh, a fraction of seconds okay ma'am i have a question now yeah tell ma'am what are the techniques are used to find the spin of electron whether it is in upward or downward direction ma'am what are the techniques uh, we follow for spin up or down, right? Um, actually, for spin up or down, we will ca we'll calculate uh, by using the magnetic field. 
okay we will apply some magnetic field uh, for uh, spin high and for spin down so uh, it, it involves some mathematical calculations for spin up and uh, down uh, there will be some uh, uh, calculations will be there like uh, expressions will be there by using that expression we will uh, check whether it is a spin up or down okay yeah so if you observe how many times the quantum computer is faster than the regular computers so if you see the google quantum computer new quantum computer from last five to six years the google is working on quantum computers so recently it is uh, 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 it is working some of the on some of the limitations okay at uh, starting it faced a lot of disadvantages uh, because we cannot uh, uh, whenever we are using atomic level first of all uh, we need to make uh, a a uh, constant uh, uh, at a temperature at a very low temperature so, uh, uh, we need to use the atom otherwise uh, it always it will uh, uh, move uh, uh, like uh, within the system right so it would be collapse okay so that are uh, major reasons uh, for quantum computing limitations okay so uh, how many times it would be faster 241 million times uh, it is faster than the uh, classical computer and whatever they have uh, designed at starting okay the quantum computer and now uh, in 2023 whatever they have designed that is the huge difference between the classical computer and the quantum computer okay so whatever uh, we take 47 years uh, suppose if you want to compute any task or any algorithm if you take uh, 47 years uh, uh, to compute any algorithm by using the quantum computing quantum algorithms we can solve it in just a seconds okay so those type of complex uh, applications are there uh, suppose if you see in you know, all over world like a weather casting weather forecasting uh, so weather forecasting normally in our uh, villages or in our cities means we can uh, easily predict but if you go in uh, like uh, in mountains uh, mountain side or some uh, seashore side like that uh, uh, there we, uh, it is very difficult uh, to predict the weather then it would be very quantum computing would be very useful and for military applications and uh, medical applications also these computers uh, would be helpful okay so but what are the main challenges we need to uh, uh, face what are the challenges in the sense if you observe here main thing is the temperature why the temperature is the main thing because everything we are storing in an atom right so whenever we are storing in atom uh, we should it should be in a constant temperature it should be in a constant temperature okay uh, but always the atom will rotate uh, with, uh, it will have some uh, uh, it will rotate inside the chip right so whenever it is rotating we need we need not to be stabilized the atom even if there are some minor temperature changes also the atom will be uh, uh, will not in a stabilized state right so that is the main uh, uh, here we are facing that uh, limitation okay so we need to store the quantum computers in a cool area like around minus 273 degrees celsius or minus 459 uh, degrees fahrenheit that means very coolest place like our refrigerators okay like uh, ice uh, whenever we are uh, taking like a uh, uh, defrigerators right so at the, those places we need to put our quantum chips okay so always uh, we need to take care of that even uh, whenever we are walking uh, beside the quantum computing okay around uh, anyway those will be in some cool area like uh, uh, in the room uh, room temperature uh, so we, we need to take care of that right so even if you are walking or running around that quantum computing also 
it would be collapsed if any temperature changes happen or any some disturbance is there also it would be collapsed okay so that is the major challenge we are facing with the quantum computing otherwise quantum computing will work a million times faster than the supercomputing okay so these are the main applications of quantum computing like a cryptography okay cryptography in the sense uh, mainly for encryption and decryption purpose uh, we use the medicine in the medicine uh, equipments uh, uh, if you observe uh, nowadays we are seeing, uh, seeing very a uh, lot of advancements in the medicine equipment also right so in future uh, we use mostly ai based uh, applications only uh, like uh, all the uh, robotic way okay for diagnosis or whatever the medical equipment is also very uh, complex thing so everything it would be in ai based and machine learning in machine learning also we use the quantum computing uh, for data analysis and uh, uh, for ai applications and searching big data searching big data in the sense Nowadays, we are searching only for few, uh, like uh, according to our applications, we are searching, right? But if you go beyond that, it is very impossible to search the complex data. If you uh, suppose, if suppose a register office is there, okay, register office in the sense there will be so many applications before from uh, uh, whoever have buy some place, okay, uh, from a uh, last 10, uh, 10 members, uh, uh, the data we need to collect right uh, so where it could be the uh, 10 members data we need to store in some server right so those type of uh, data also we can easily uh, get by using the quantum computing algorithms okay so these are the applications of quantum computing but only the limitations of uh temperature okay that is the only one limitation and it is very hard to store the data into the atomic level okay i will show you the quantum computer how the quantum computer will be look like and how the data is uh, uh, storing in the atom and how uh, we will predict the electron these things we will uh, i will show you a video uh, can you please join for the next session everyone um, is it visible everyone yes, okay yes, this is the quantum computer okay so you can see so what is this it's nothing but a quantum chip okay normally whatever the processes we have up to now these are multiple systems if you have any doubts you can please help me please mute your system if you have any doubts, then only you can unmute and you can talk. Okay, see here. So whatever the normal computers, uh, you have seen the chip. Okay, yesterday you have seen like some Intel processor chip, right? So how the Intel processor chip has designed by using the transistors, either it's a CMOS transistor, CMOS fabrication or FinFET or GAFET or MAGFET, whatever uh, the fabrication technologies, uh, by using the transistor, we have uh, we have taken in terms of stick diagrams for each transistor and billions of transistors are integrated on a chip, on a silicon wafer, okay? But here, if you observe, it is a quantum computing. In quantum computing, here is the chip, okay? Remaining all are gold-plated wires. So here, mostly in quantum computing, we use the gold, okay? Because gold is a good uh, good conducting material here. Uh, so um, we use the gold here. 
uh, for uh, remaining connections and the internal uh, wire connections and all. So, but processor, how the processor has designed, you can observe now. So, uh, here there would be an atom. So, in the atom, how the electron, uh, uh, electron principle, uh, you can observe that electron property. And uh, yeah, you can see here. So, this is the atom. Okay, so around the atom, the electrons will rotate, right? So you can observe that thing. We can predict a electron property by its waveform only. Either as a wave or particle two states it will have two states right so everything we will predict in terms of waveform or a particle okay so um so here is the qubits so before we have seen the spin property so how what is the arrow mark here whether spin up or spin down based on that it will store the data okay same property here so by using the classical computer we can store either zero or one at a uh, at a time but here by using the qubit we will store zero one or zero or one okay those are the possibilities Oh, ma'am, how they will store multiple bits over here? How we are storing multiple bits means uh, here uh, uh, based on the entanglement principle or spin property, we are storing the data. So each bit having that uh, 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 so, revolution? Uh, yeah. Each bit will have a... See, so here suppose this is the electron. Electron is rotating, right? So, uh, here we are passing some magnetic field. If you observe the arrow mark, so here we will pass some the magnetic field. Based on the magnetic field, how it is rotating, uh, how the electron is rotating, okay? So, whenever it is rotating, we can store either 1 or 0 bit. So, based on that property or there is entanglement principle. Entanglement principle means there would be some, suppose, two particles. Okay. Based on the two particles, whenever we apply the uh, principle, so one will be at a high spin up and another one will be the spin down automatically. So, based on that also, we can store either zero or one. So here is the entanglement principle. So this is how we are designing a chip. Okay. So, but what is the limitation here? What is this white color box? What would you think about this white color box? Refrigerator. Refrigerator. So inside uh, this only um, the uh, tell. Um, how we read the data from the atom? Sorry? How we, how we read the data from the atom? How we read the data from the atom? Here, uh, we are not reading the data here. Atom is storing the data here. 
based on the electron here uh, atom we have the electrons and protons right so based on the electron by using the electron property we are storing the data here okay did you got the point so remaining or uh, suppose yeah. if you yes, see normal SOC architecture in SOC architecture we have different blocks like a graphic processor or memory controller or some IO peripherals will be there. Some IO ports like camera module or some outside the interfaces we will connect or like analog proof digital converters we use. Different blocks will be there. Like that, like that in quantum computing also there will be different blocks. So from processor to the different blocks we will uh, 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 will have the control path and the data path. Okay. But here the main motive of this quantum computer is how we are designing a chip by using the atom particle, okay, by using the electron. Uh, so uh, th uh, this one is a initial state only, okay. If you want to uh, go in depth, you need to know first of all on atomic theory, okay. Quantum computing is mainly atomic theory how the electrons are rotating and how it is storing the data, how, what is the spin property, okay, everything on the mathematical calculations and all, okay. So, based on that, uh, you can work on some of the theorems and algorithms, so you will understand what exactly inside the uh, quantum chips, okay, how the behavior of the electrons, okay. Ma'am, I want to add one point. How we get back the output? How? How we get back the output? How we get the output? Right? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Here, how we, get the, how we get the, the output in the sense, see, how we get the output in the sense, uh, like normal processor, whatever the processor we are using in the laptops or mobile phones, how we are getting the data, Using binary. Binary. Uh, it uh, like uh, suppose I'm talking. Whatever I'm talking, or you are seeing some video. All these are uh, physical data. Physical data in the sense analog data, right? Whatever we are talking, voice uh, or some music, everything in the analog in nature. That analog data we are converting into the digital data by using analog and digital converters, and there will be some encoding and de de decoding uh, inside the circuit, right? So whatever I'm talking, the processor, how it would understand. Uh, so the analog converter will convert our voice into the binary data based on the instructions. Uh, so in our processors, currently we are writing some instructions, assembly language programming to uh, work on some uh, task, right? Uh, so that it is converting by using the compilers, it will convert the data into the binary, okay? Same mechanism, whatever the data it is converting into the binary, binary data in the sense the transistor will convert that into the uh, based on the switching operation. So same whatever we are performing here in the atomic theory also will perform same thing. But there we won't use any instruction set like that. There are uh, some uh, new algorithms out there. Based on that, the internal processor will convert our analog data into its uh, binary data. From that, uh, by using different peripherals, that processor would be connected to the different peripherals. By, uh, by From that peripherals, we are getting the data. Okay. Ma'am, instead of processor, we are just using quantum computers, right? Yeah. Processor is nothing but uh, whatever uh, we are using on a, uh, a laptop processor, those are designed using the silicon, right? Silicon material uh, by using the transistors, okay? Like 5 nanometer transistor, 3 nanometer transistor. But beyond 1 nanometer, whenever we are moving to 1 nanometer, we cannot use those processors, silicon processors in our laptops or mobile phones, okay? So what next beyond 1 nanometer, what is the future technology, okay? That is the main intention of our session. So beyond that, what we are observing in the sense, one is the quantum, this one atomic, uh, in the atomic level, we are discussing uh, this quantum computing. That is the one major uh, 
problem solution for the VLSA, for the future of VLSA. Next solution is uh, artificial intelligence okay so what is the artificial intelligence mainly the artificial intelligence in the sense it will work on uh, the deep, uh, deep neural network algorithms and the machine learning algorithms right so that thing we will discuss a little bit later okay before if you observe here this is the refrigerator for the quantum computing okay so if you observe internal chip here internal chip how we are storing this internal chip in the white box in the ice box we are storing the chip that means we are controlling the chip here because it, it is working on atoms mainly it have few electrons in the atomic level we are storing the data okay even if it is not stabilized if the atom is not stabilized means the entire system will be collapsed okay so that is the major limitation with the quantum computing okay so many research is going on uh, with uh, quantum computing we don't have any courses on the quantum computing till now but what are the major courses we can learn for quantum computing means you can uh, you can learn some atomic uh, theory atomic principles on electrons uh, electron principles quantum mechanics you can learn these principles by using that we can apply uh, in an industrial way okay but uh, as we are learning like suppose you are learning some physical design courses vlsf front end design verification courses you are learning now right so like that we don't have any courses still now for the quantum computing or neuromorphism there are no courses may uh, some of the institute very rare one or two institutes have introduced some of the courses those also very basic level courses okay so these all are in a implementation stage only we didn't got any quantum computing in the market okay so why we are discussing these things means in the future next five to ten years this would be the technology of vlsi vlsi never did so that is the main intention of the workshop like uh, for, uh, to give the idea for the students so many of the students uh, whoever uh, doing uh, uh, btech or mtech like third year or second year they will they are uh, uh, thinking a lot like uh, uh, vlsa made it of uh, like a market situation is not good so there is no future for vlsa for next five years ten years right so for that purpose we have arranged some demo session like this okay so to give the basic idea on what the future of vlsa and what are the uh, trends are coming in the vlsa chip design so what is the main uh, uh, how in uh, investors are going to uh, investing on the semiconductor industry compared to the foreign countries to india so that is the main intention of the workshop okay but these are like in a very basic level we don't have any courses any practical projects related anything we don't have till now okay everyone got clarity yes, okay then you may get the doubt then why we need to learn from here now only uh, we may learn after five years or ten years we may learn like that right but my intention is if you are working from now okay if you are concentrating on these type of projects from now after five years or ten years you will be in a position like uh, you can create anything okay you can create anything if you have the basic knowledge now these basic knowledge will be applied on the good projects by that time okay so that's why these knowledge would, would be important for the next five years or uh, 10 years. Okay. Suppose simple example, simple example, like uh, I think uh, uh, from this batch, there would be uh, employees, uh, parents will be there, right? Most of the employee parents. Uh. So how the engineers are uh, in 2020, uh, I mean 2000, in the, uh, in the year of 2000 that time or 19th, uh, okay, in year of 19th, uh, that time how the engineers uh, uh, like uh, in terms of knowledge there would be known uh, like a very basic knowledge right very basic knowledge whoever get to the industries in the time of 1990s or 2000 that time whoever getting into the industry 
now they are ruling the companies right uh, so if you see any ceo or any managers those are uh, those managers all uh, all are from uh, to the uh, 2000 graduates like uh, 19 graduates okay that time they don't have any information they don't know anything regarding the vlsa and all but based on the experience based on the fabrication technologies or improving based on the vlsa chip design is improving they got the knowledge based on the processors and all based on uh, processor uh, projects on chip design they got the good knowledge and they are, now they are in a position like a manager position or uh, like some founder position like that they can able to manage the company okay from their basic knowledge to now like that we are in a beginning of the vlsa vlsa is going to begin a good uh, technology okay in next two to three years it, it is stepping into a good tech, uh, new technology okay so uh, present now we are in a very basic path okay so if you are improving uh, from this level it would be very advantage uh, after uh, after uh, two to three years whenever these type of technologies are really mm -hmm. getting into the market okay everyone understood Everyone yes, understood now? Okay. So these are the some of the limitations with the quantum technology. Okay. Already it is in uh, uh, like a implementation stage only. No one implemented a hundred percent. Okay. So, but some of the research is going on. Okay. So this is one of the uh, next coming, next generation of uh, chip design. Okay. And next thing is chromorphic chips. So whenever the chip design is beyond one nanometer in the same, uh, next uh, another uh, technology, emerging technology would be neuromorphic chip. So how the new neuromorphic chips would be designed? You know, uh, uh, from, uh, from uh, like uh, when we are in childhood onwards, we will talk, we'll tell the, like that uh, uh, CPU is the, uh, brain of the computer okay central processing is, unit is the brain of the computer okay but is it real like uh, have we dump our uh, brain, uh, or, uh, brain structure neural structure into the cpu really have we dumped the brain neural structure our human brain or whatever the brain uh, have we dumped uh, the neural structure into the cpu whatever we are using in our computers currently no ma'am no ma'am everything uh, currently whatever we are seeing the uh, uh, chips uh, chip design or processor whatever those are working based on some instructions some assembly language programming or some verification methodologies these are working mainly on the assembly language programming it will take the instructions according to the instructions uh, it will perform all the task okay but assembly language programming would be work for the silicon chips uh, until whatever we have used the nanometer technology or micrometer technology for the processor design it would be used okay but we are moving to the new trend right so where we are uh, taking some of the neural networks and all their assembly language programming these all won't work okay so we need to we need to look forward for different technology so here what type what what the different technology we are finding means the neuromorphic chip it is a structure like hum functionality of human brain okay those are de designed to mimic the behavior of biological neurons and synapses of human brain so whatever however the brain structure of humans are there same uh, in same manner we are going to design these neuromorphic chips okay so uh, uh, so however the design and uh, architecture of neuromorphic chips are specialized to emulate the parallel pro processing and interconnected for of neuron in the brain okay so this is one new trend is going to emerge in the vlsa next 5 to 10 years not mostly 10 years in next five years we get this type of technology okay but further 
from uh, as you are the fresh graduates okay next five years means very less time right so from now onwards how you can work on uh, good technologies okay so whenever you are improving your knowledge day by day then only you are uh, you will be settled uh, well settled in current uh, market situation okay you know how the current market situation is very high competition very high competition there are very less jobs and high competition okay so how they are recruiting the people how the job how uh, the, uh, the companies are recruiting based on the logical knowledge of the students only the logical knowledge the creativity knowledge how they are in innovating the new things based on these only uh, every company is going to hire nowadays no one is looking into what is the coding knowledge whether he can do the coding or not okay whether he is following some certain rules uh, for designing a program or he is following the syntax or not Okay, no one is falling because all the syntax designing, logical designing, everything we got into the AI. Okay, currently we are seeing chart GPT. Next year we may get some of AI applications like a chart uh, GPT, and some we get some more advantages, advancements in the technology. Right. So the jobs are very less. We need to utilize those jobs, and we should be in a great position. In every field, not only in VLSA, in every field, okay. But compared to the software or embedded system, embedded system is evergreen, okay. Embedded systems is evergreen. So compared to the software or anything, next in next five years, the artificial is going to rule. How it is going to rule? Suppose if you take the software development program like app development, you will develop a app using the Python or Java, okay. But by using the chat GPT or AI application, any AI application, we are able to run the Java program. We are able to run the Python program. We are able to run the uh, system wedlock program. Every program we are getting from only one chat GPT, right? Everything we are getting from one chat GPT. We no need to learn individually different languages. So how it is working? So how the technology is improving? Are you able to understand my point, everyone? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So that is what the future is going to improve. Nowadays, we, we, we will think like our parents will think like uh, uh, in our days, we don't have any these type of mobile phones or we don't have any uh, technology like this chat GPT. But after 20 years, we need to tell same thing. In our days, we don't have any uh, these type of uh, AI applications, very smart uh, robotic applications. Maybe in next 20 years, every home will have a robo. Whatever it is, uh, a robo like, uh, uh, the, uh, like a room cleaning robot, whatever. So that is what the era we are going to see in next 20 years. Next 20 years means... You will be in an age just in 30, 35. So 30, 35 means you should be in a better position, in a high career position in the semiconductor industry, right? So what is my intention is you need to build your knowledge from now itself. You need to work on latest technologies, how according to the market, according to the market uh, investments, according to the market trends, you need to learn, okay? So you need not to concentrate uh, from uh, like olden days. However, we have learned the C language, Java, Python. These are not the trend. Okay. So if you want to be very good position in the uh, any industry, whatever the industry, you need to learn based on the uh, next future generation. Like what are the new trends? Okay. So that is uh, in that one of the important one is a neuromorphic chip. Okay. So this would be definitely rule the uh, rule the industry in next five years. Definitely. Okay. So how it would be designed here in, in these uh, neuromorphic chips, we mostly uh, follow the deep learning algorithms. Deep learning algorithms are nothing but 
the subfield of machine learning in the artificial intelligence. In artificial intelligence, we have different classifications like machine learning or deep learning, uh, like uh, where uh, the algorithms are taken from biological structure and it, is, it would be functioning from the brain of uh, uh, human brains. Okay, uh, so that, that, that uh, data we are going to uh, take into a machine and we are going to use, okay? So these are one of the future technology would be uh, used in the AI chips, okay? So for this, still now for AI chips also, we don't have any information. We don't have any job. Uh, I mean, uh, we don't have any particular courses, but you need to learn some machine learning algorithms, some deep learning algorithms, so in next two or three years, you will be in a position of designing some uh, some logical uh, data in chip level, some instructions you can develop. So that would be uh, the good plan, okay? So if you step any phys into the physical design or front-end design, after getting into the industry, you can concentrate on some uh, these type of trends, neuromorphic uh, design, okay? So these type of courses you can uh, uh, do. Okay. So next thing is, uh, so this is the deep learning algorithm, one of the deep learning algorithm. So if you observe from last uh, five years or uh, five years, we already seeing some of the convolution neural networks, some of the, uh, so many applications we are seeing, how we are, uh, suppose, uh, uh, our mobile phone, the face uh, detector is there. How the face detector is uh, happening? Same, there also we use these deep learning algorithms. Okay, so first uh, we need to, we are giving our face data, right? Uh, so how it is taking the face data based on our uh, color uh, and uh, uh, here uh, everything will be there like a uh, nose or uh, eye, eyes. Uh, so everything it will take the data, the structure, internal structure will be there uh, according to the system. Okay, some uh, layers uh, structure would be there. So it will uh, take that structure and whenever we are trying to open our mobile phone, it will detect that uh, it will uh, detect our face. Then only it will able to open the mobile phone, right? Already we are, we are seeing uh, these type of technologies mostly in current days, but in next five years, everything, everywhere, it would be uh, this, uh, the new trends, okay? So this is the main future of the VLSI. So VLSI never dead. We cannot tell it as a VLSI, chip design, okay? Chip design, chip design never dead, okay? VLSI already dead, but chip design will never dead, okay? So suppose this is the one of the so, uh, uh, example, like a giraffe is there, okay? From that, how we are taking the uh, data, okay? Like there are so many, uh, so many features will be there, okay? Like it's uh, size or uh, color or uh, it have some lines. Uh, so, so that data will be collected according to the data. Suppose if you see here the neural network. So what is that neural network? Like our brain, right? So it would be st uh, structurized in a same way and um, uh, the, the output will be getting like this, okay? So mostly mathematical algorithms will be involved in these things, okay? So you can do special courses on this. But, but another thing I will tell you mainly, if you do the special courses on this, there will be no openings for now, okay? I'm just telling the future. Okay, there are no openings uh, for deep learning algorithm, uh, deep learning or AI for now. Okay, maybe in next two to three years, definitely we'll get. So these are how some of the deep learning algorithm. So one of the application is chat GPT. Yesterday we have discussed, right? So how the chat GPT has developed, how many number of CPU cores are used. 285,000 CPU cores have used in the chat GPT. 10,000 GPU cores are used. Okay, so in the main server, this is the hardware of the chat GPT. So we are able to, everyone can able to access, right? 
so by uh, by using those many number of uh, core we are able to uh, uh, control those operations okay we are storing that uh, that much of data into the server from that server we are accessing through the internet uh, network connectivity okay so everyone clear up to here Hello, am I audible? Hello, 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 okay. So, everyone clear up to here. Is it clear? So tomorrow we will discuss a few applications. Sir, uh, tomorrow I will take That's one more session. Hello. Tomorrow I will take uh, a half an hour session for you all. Okay. So whoever have the doubts and all, uh, you can ask tomorrow. Okay. I will take one more session tomorrow. Okay. Is it clear up to here? Do you have any doubts? Hello. That's what I am telling. Currently, we don't have any courses with respect to the AI in VLSI. Those all are in a basic stage only. Okay. Tomorrow, we will discuss remaining things. So still, do you have any doubts, others? And how to get intern in VLSI? Uh, internship, huh? Yes, ma'am. Internship in I the... I can't find any internship as a pressure. Now yeah. I'm pursuing my business of earlier. So I can't find any internship or as a job. I can't find a job also. So in VLSI domain. Is there any opportunities? Uh, okay. Uh, get, uh, internships uh, means uh, mostly uh, product companies only uh, take the internships. They only have the internship opportunities. For that, uh, first of all, you must have very good knowledge on digital electronics, Verilog, HDL. If you are looking for physical design, you must have the physical design knowledge. Or design verification means you must have system verilog and projects and protocols are very important uh, to get an internship or a job projects and protocols are very important so ma'am yeah yeah uh, so actually i have a question uh, it's not for me also for the freshers like what are the projects uh, a freshman need to do to get into the industry, like for the physical design, for the front end and the, for the back end? So uh, most of the students and also the freshers projects, they don't know. Yeah. Uh, don't know what are the projects they need to mention in the resume. Mm -hmm. I also face the same issue, like uh, to get an internship or also a full-time job. Like what are the projects like currently industry look uh, for the pressure? yeah see whatever the projects you are doing whatever the name maybe the name is different okay for any project but implementation wise designing wise verification wise we will follow the same way like designing using the verilog hdl verification using system verilog or uvm or if you go for physical design you will do the placement and routing process that is a different okay so project name is different but every project is the same in that you need to learn in depth of uh, designing and verification different test cases you need to write your own okay so every interviewer what they will ask means the in depth knowledge of coding Okay, if you go for system verilog or verilog, in-depth knowledge of project, uh, project how you have implemented, how you have designed, how you have verified, 
how you have written the logic that would be very important for any project. Can you please join for the next session quickly everyone? We will discuss more clearly on this. Same link, same link. Can you please join quickly? Yeah. Hello? Am I audible? Hello? Am I audible? Hello? 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 Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Ma'am, yeah. you are not audible. Yeah, am I audible now? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, tell. Uh, okay, let me discuss a few things. So, here is the VLSA chip design flow. Okay. So, in VLSA chip design flow, I already told you what are the different domains are there, right? First of all, first thing is uh, in the front end design, we have the design and verification role. Okay. As a design engineer, first they will go through the specification, the system specification according to the SOC. Okay. There are different blocks involved in that. So, based on that, each team will be uh, there. Okay. So, each block, there will be separate teams. According to the team, based on the previous uh, previous uh, uh, project, uh, mostly uh, any uh, every project, they won't develop from the scratch. Okay. Uh, they will implement from the previous project only. Okay. So, first of all, they will take all insights of the previous project. For the project, they will add the features. Okay. So, the design engineers will design RTL. After RTL designing, we'll get the circuit netlist. So, if you observe here, uh, suppose uh, uh, this is the multiplexer, digital electronics. Okay. For multiplexer, we, are, we can design in a four ways. First of all, we can take a true table. From the true table, we'll get the logic expression. From the logic expression, we'll get the output diagram, right? A circuit diagram. So, in Verilog HDL also, we can write in a different ways. This is the designing, okay? We can write the programming, behavioral, data flow, gate level, switch level, like this, okay? Behavioral means we'll take the true table. I can discuss more detailedly, but we don't have the time, right? So, I will discuss simply. So, behavioral means mostly true table. By using the behavior of the functionality uh, specification, we write the program. Data flow means by using the output expression, we write the program. Gate level means by using the uh, gates, we write the program. Switch level means by using the transistor, we write the program. Okay. So, uh, so what is, uh, so writing the program in these levels, anyone can write. Just if you follow the syntax and all, anyone can develop the program. But that is not a good coding practice, right? You need to write a logical way. Suppose a multiplexer is there. How many ways you can write a multiplexer in a logical way? Someone will implement in a 10 number or 10 lines. Someone will implement it in a single line. The logic we can write in a single line. But there is a difference between 10 lines to single line, right? So those type of uh, uh, logical, uh, uh, logical ways you need to learn. Okay, to, uh, to become a good engineer. Most of the interviews will ask same thing. Okay, how logically you will write a piece of code. How you will implement a piece of code. Okay, so this is how we will write the uh, a design code. Either it is a behavioral or data flow or gate level. After doing the synthesis like this, if you see the right side, we will get one circuit netlist in gate level or in a transistor level. Okay. For that circuit, we need to apply the input stimulus. That is the process of verification. Okay. So, verification is also an important step. Without doing the verification, we cannot transmit our chip, our design to the back-end process. We cannot directly dump our design to the physical design in a silicon. 
okay because maybe there will be some errors there will be some bug issues and all right i am the only one getting audio breaking am i audible everyone am i audible everyone is it clear now am i audible hello hello am i audible actually yes, i think your internet connection is bad maybe you can continue tomorrow yeah okay just 5 minutes so uh, so uh, this is how we can write a design program using berlock hdl from that we will generate the circuit net list to the circuit net list we will apply the verification uh, we will apply the input that is nothing but design and verification back in yesterday we have seen right physical design process physical design in the sensor uh, so this is the partitioning chip planning placement clock tree synthesis signal routing timing closure in this also there will be different courses available okay in physical design also okay so anything whatever you are learning projects are very important protocols are very important okay so projects and protocols you need to design in a way like you can write any logic suppose uh, you are doing some verification project okay so what is meant by verification you need to test the corner scenarios of that project you can you need to test different scenarios you need to generate the coverage report you need to write some assertions okay you need to check the coverage analysis functional coverage analysis toggle coverage analysis so that is the main thing of any project right so if you are designing a project purely as a design engineer so what is the main role you need to design a micro architecture of that uh, project a micro architecture of that uh, uh, any design okay you need to uh, design in a rtl uh, rtl synthesis you need to generate rtl circuit net list in a transistor level you need to design you need to check uh, the timing analysis you need to check the clock tree synthesis so as a design engineer we need to uh, work on these type of things like that in physical design in physical design mostly uh, nowadays what the tools there are uh, so many license version tools in the physical design uh, we won't work anything manual all things generated by tools in physical tools a uh, design tool knowledge is important front end design in the design verification writing the design program and uh developing that cases is important that only thing uh, if you face any interview that only thing they will observe how you are building a logic how you have designed a uh, verification plan or any test case the, the that would be any one will check and coming to the projects the latest projects like uh, mostly on processor designing uh, new uh, uh, nowadays uh, most of the companies are asking on risk of five processor verification some soc level verification projects and whatever any ip level verification project whatever the project you are doing you must have in depth knowledge of how you are designing a project how you are implementing a program how you are generating a test cases in uvm methodology or system verlock whatever okay so still is there any doubts others still any doubts so we are also starting a new batch for design verification program and some of the projects are there like risk of five processor with s4c verification so any one of the people if anyone are interested you can you can join for the courses okay i will share you the brochure of uh, design verification and risk five both are starting from next week if any freshers if any third years are there you can prefer i am i am only the trainer so if you are interested uh, you can ping me okay so in the design verification we are starting from the digital electronics digital electronics and uh, verlock hdl system verlock uvm perl scripting language there will be regular live sessions like this same 
there will be regular live sessions uh alternate days mostly alternate days one day is live session one day is for assignment practice okay in verilog we are going to discuss one protocol implementation and one project designing and in system verilog also same uh, two protocols verification and one project verification in uvm also two vip verification and one project verification so there will be regular assignments mock tests will be there Okay, I will share you the brochure after the session. Why do we need the scripting language means? Suppose if you go for any industry, now now whatever we are working here with a simple tool, right? But whenever we are going to industry, in SOC level or IP level, there will be uh, thousands of uh, uh, test benches, thousands of test cases will be there, okay? For thousands of test cases, how you will run the how you will run those many number of test cases, how you will analyze the coverage for those many of test cases. It is very difficult to check if which test case is passed and which test case is failed in thousands of test cases, right? So you need to ma make partition of uh, how many tests pass and how many tests fail and what is the error signature where the test has failed. We need to observe all these things, right? So how we will run all these thousands of test cases or how we can run hundreds of blocks means by using the scripting language, okay? So the, if you take any Perl scripting, suppose in Perl scripting, we will, we will write one command to run all the test cases at a time to run the regression, okay? So by running the regression, even it is at thousands of test cases or thousands of test cases, by using a single command, we will run all the test cases. Like that by using single command, we will upload the coverage. We can extract the coverage. So everything will be done uh, very simply. In terms of commands only, we will do everything. So that's why Perl scripting is important. As a fresher, it is not required for freshers. When you go to industry, when you get two to three year experience, that would be required. Okay, so still anyone have the doubts? Analog should also be learned from front end uh, VLSI. Analog is not required. Analog uh, domain is different, digital domain is different. Uh, if you want to go for digital design, purely digital things you need to learn. If you are if you are interested in analog domain, that that is different. That courses are different. Uh, that uh, course structure, everything is different. I okay. have a question. Yeah, tell. Uh, so is static timing analysis is required for the front end? Static timing analysis is not required. Very depth. But you need to learn what is meant by setup analysis or uh, hold analysis. So basic things, uh, what is meant by metastability state. Uh, so basic things are required. Okay. Yeah. So what is the main difference between the design verification and DFT? Design verification in the sense, uh, here uh, we'll write the test cases, but DFT in the sense, uh, there we have, uh, we will follow some scan chain, uh, daisy chain fashion, uh, uh, that is uh, different, uh, so, like, uh, so what is the main difference means, uh, uh, just a second, I will show you. Suppose if you see here, uh, okay. okay, so DFT in the sense, uh, nothing but uh, there we use the scan chain or uh, these type of protocols, after, after verification, we do the, uh, design for uh, testing because uh, purely design we will uh, verify there at the gate level simulation okay so but uh, here uh, design verification in the sense we are we are running the test cases for a functionality okay functionality verification is uh, different design for dft is uh, uh, different okay dft comes under the post silicon process right uh, DFT, uh, DFT comes under pre-silicon only, 
In post silicon, another thing is the DFT, designed for debug. Both are different. DFT we do in the pre-silicon. Even we are doing the verification in the pre-silicon, most of the tests will be escaped. Most of the bugs will be escaped because of uh, uh, the very uh, complexity in the architecture. Okay. So that's why after designing is completed, suppose after manufacturing is completed, still we are seeing some bug issues. To eliminate that bug issues, to resolve the bug issues in post silicon, there is another team called DFT team. By using the DFT team, uh, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we will verify the uh, test cases. Okay, so we will solve all the uh, error signatures in the DF, DFD, designed for debug. So mainly so DFT what? means uh, if we have the main techniques. Uh, there are some techniques will be there. Mainly like uh, built-in self-test, uh, BIST techniques, boundary scan techniques, uh, test point insertion techniques. Uh, these are mainly for uh, during the manufacturing time. Uh, before the manufacturing time, we will check the falls uh, in the field. Like mainly uh, socket falls. Uh, uh, like uh, 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 these type of things we'll observe in the DFT. So what are the skills like required need to learn uh, for one who is applying for the DFT? Like DFT, and also like uh, one who is preparing for the design verification also like he can apply for the DFT. Yeah, design verification also can apply for DFT. But uh, mostly compared to the design verification, DFT have very less uh, opportunity. So in DFT, we have to learn mainly uh, like a scan chain, uh, uh, like uh, these uh, BIST, BIST uh, technology uh, techniques will be there. Boundary scan techniques will be there. So uh, these we need to learn mainly. Okay. Yeah. So that is a different. In DFT, there would be no coding and all. In DB, there will be coding. So in DFT, mm -hmm. just... Uh, uh, like uh, like basic concepts, the DFT techniques uh, will be there, like uh, uh, pattern generation, test pattern generation applications. Uh, there will be boundary scan, JTAG applications will be there. And uh, mostly uh, that would be test pattern generations. Uh, by using that, we will, de uh, we will check uh, the speed of the clock, okay, uh, how the, the uh, between each protocol Okay, by using the JTAG, these things we will check mainly. Uh, low power test techniques would be there like that. And also, uh, I have a doubt on low power methodology. Is it useful for the design? Low power verification technology. Role? Yes, uh, design verification engineers require low power analysis. Currently, there are a lot of job op openings for low power analysis. Uh, low power analysis is related to the kind of a like a coding or what like it's like uh, related to system verilog and EVM methodologies or like uh, it's totally different from that? It, uh, no, it is not uh, related. It is related to system verilog UVM only. But low power analysis in the sense uh, what techniques we need to follow for uh, efficient uh, power usage, how can we reduce the power consumption like uh, UDP, okay, uh, we will follow some unified data path, these type of techniques will be there uh, in the low power analysis, how we can optimize the code, uh, so these things will be there. So is like one who is applying for the entry level jobs, like is it will be helpful not for the entry level. learning? For entry level uh, low power analysis, these things are not required. If you have, that would be good, but specifically not required. Uh, whoever mostly three to four years experience, they only will get uh, industry knowledge. Industry knowledge is important. From courses like that, you won't get uh, uh, the, that type of knowledge for low power analysis. Industries, Having the basic uh, knowledge is good. Yeah, right? basic like... knowledge is good. Basic knowledge is enough. But if you want to work on... Uh, uh, the project level means uh, we need to work with industry only because that that uh, uh, techniques will be different. Uh, the technology, whatever they are using, that would be different. Okay, ma'am. So after EI empowers into VLSA, which domain have better prospects? Which domain have better prospects means? In VLSA, both uh, physical design and front-end design, both are uh, same. But currently, according to market situation, 
there are very less openings for uh, physical design compared to the front end front end have some good openings okay but physical design also good which domain d and f or e or physical d and f means physical design have more jobs Most of physical design and DV is good. Design verification would be good. But current market situation, uh, if you compare, there are less openings. That's it. But VLSI would be having great future. If you if you step into VLSI uh, nowadays, uh, in, in next one or two years, next five years, uh, you will be in a good position. That would be uh, that will hundred percent uh, assurance I can give. Okay. Uh, still, is there any doubts? Others? So, if you are very interested uh, uh, in core field, don't take any. Uh, don't take uh, any different uh, thoughts and don't take any uh, motivations from others. From your family or from relatives, they always try to demotivate only. Okay, so if you are interested, just uh, just get into the field, work on some projects, work on some uh, uh, languages like Verilog system, Verilog like this, or physical design. If you are interested, just um, uh, just work on mostly the projects are important. Okay, hands on experience is very important. Oh, and I have a last one question. Sorry to the yeah, tell. Uh, like for the pressure, like is it necessary to learn the assembly language like x86, x32? Uh, assembly language is uh, different, that would be comes under uh, embedded processor. Uh, assembly language you can learn, uh, yeah. But like most of the job roles, like uh, they are asking like for the assembly languages, like if they are applying for the Intel, like. The most of the product yeah companies. currently yes assembly language is for mostly currently there are openings for risk five processor that is also assembly language programming only right arm okay. arm is one of the company in every job description uh for arm if you observe in every job description it will mention the risk five processor computer architecture that is mandatory for arm for intel also so Assembly we need to language. learn the basics. Yeah. Yes, the no, not basics, not basics. You need to learn in depth design and verification development. Okay. Yeah. So, still any doubts? So, UVM subscriber, UVM subscriber is nothing but uh, we, we, it, will, it would be designed for receiving the transactions from the test bench. So mainly we will analyze uh, uh, for checking the uh, how the transaction data, we can analyze the content of the relevant task. So mainly it would interact with the UVM test bench by using the UVM subscriber. We can generate the reports, we can update the scoreboards, we can analyze the task. Okay. And coming to the scripting language, like uh, one should, like the pressure need to learn the TC, uh, TICL and also the PEARL. Like all PEARL is like used for and design verification. TICL, TCL is used for physical design. Okay, tickle is not for the front end. No, for for, for back end people, it would be good. Okay. Okay, so still, is there any other doubts? Others? So main intention of this uh, workshop, like a uh, two days demo session, is so. What is the main future of the VLSI? Okay, just to give some intention, uh, some insights of the future technology okay so that that is the main thing so is there any doubts still so you can share your feedback 
okay so if anyone interested you can tag me in the linkedin and you can share your feedback in the linkedin also okay Okay. Still, any doubts? Can we can we close the session, girls? Is there any girls here? No one asked the doubts. Sinduja, Sri Lanka. Okay, okay. If you have any doubts, uh, you can contact me. Okay, in the WhatsApp group, uh, there is my number, admin and admin number. So you still, if you have any doubts and all, uh, you can discuss. Okay, okay. Then all, thank you. Thank you. WhatsApp group, I don't uh if you observe, uh, if you go to that uh, group uh, uh, vlsi ai workshop group uh, there is an admin number right 8618698748 so whatsapp yes whatsapp okay yeah okay thank you guys thank you ma'am yeah thank you ma'am organizing us such good webinar Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.